Hurricane Ian continues to batter Florida tonight after making landfall just shy of becoming a Category 5. The storm now heading toward the Orlando area. Let's bring in Hurricane Specialist John Morales with the latest on Ian. And you know what's incredible about this storm? Mm -hmm. Among other things, it's so such a mammoth storm that eight hours after it touched ground, it's still hurricane status. No, exactly, right? I mean, and that's because it had so much momentum going in in terms of the spin of the wind. So, I mean, it's still a hurricane at this hour. It's still producing incredible rain rates plus wind on the backside. You know, the backside, uh, the west side of the eye ended up being worse than the onset mm -hmm. of the winds. Uh, so, I mean, it's just been, it's been a, a, a horrific disaster, folks. And uh, there you see it on land tonight. And we do have the latest in terms of uh, the uh, advisory for the 11 p.m. advisory with winds, as you can see, of 90 miles per hour. Still a category one hurricane. Uh, this moving towards the north northeast at eight miles per hour. And uh, as you can see, it is seeing its pressure rise. That means that uh, the system is continuing to weaken tonight. I do have uh, the uh, radars here. I'm using both Miami and Tampa. Uh, I got to tell you something here in uh, Sarasota County, south of where Angie was broadcasting a second ago. The rainfall rates have been insane. All right. 20 inches of rain in 12 hours. So the, the, the one in 1000 year event is 14 inches of rain in 12 hours in this spot in Florida. Well, we didn't just got to 15 or 16. We got to 20 inches in 12 hours, one in one, at least a one in 1,000 year event uh, for this part of Florida. I am telling you, this is a historic hurricane, which will, which will be talked about uh, for decades, if not centuries, because I frankly, as I've been saying on air probably since 12 hours ago, uh, I believe this will be the costliest disaster in the history of the state of Florida just because of the size of this hurricane and the water. How much have I talked about water between the storm surge? Oh, because I got to talk about that too before I get to these winds. So record water levels in Naples and Fort Myers. All right. Above any other storm surge ever recorded, this broke the record. And in the case of Fort Myers, so it didn't break. The, so the record was three and a half feet. It got to over seven feet up the Colasahuchi River there. And uh, I mean, so that's why, for example, in WINK, INK, WINK television station over there, six feet of water in their first floor. And they're up on the second floor because they had to get away from the storm surge. I mean, the images we're going to see tomorrow and the amount of damage we're going to see from this is just it's just horrific. It's just terrible. Uh, all right. So we're looking at the overnight hours into 630 tomorrow morning. We lose the hurricane winds, but we still have damaging winds impacting anywhere from Orlando to the Space Coast to Daytona. And then it continues to move up and away as it becomes just a tropical storm and eventually just a much, much weaker system. So have you counted your lucky stars yet? Right. I mean, these were our peak wind gusts. We had measured gusts over on the southwest coast to 135 miles per hour. And yeah, I mean, it got to the coast with 150 mile an hour gusting to 190 mile an hour. And these are, are pretty pedestrian, honestly, gusts that we had here in South Florida, particularly in the metro area, about 45 to 50 miles an hour or so. Florida Keys, you got to 76, but you know, for you, that's a Sunday breeze too. So, you know, overall, we were very, very, very fortunate despite last night's uh, couple of tornadoes. We were very fortunate because nobody died and this is all the wind that we got. So good deal.